Hey everyone, this is Roman Pokopchuk and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me Victoria Kennedy. Victoria is a well-respected authority in public relations. She is the CEO of Victoria's PR. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Roman. I am very excited to be here. My pleasure. So tell me a little bit about your journey. How did you get to where you are today? Yeah, well, my journey is a very interesting one. I was born in a family of uh, six, well, my parents had seven, so it makes me have six brothers and sisters. So I don't know if you're listening to this and you have a big family, but yeah, I was right there with you. And I'm one of the unimportant ones. It's one of the middle child, you know, that no one really cares about. It's like, you're number three, four, something. You're not the oldest and you're not the youngest. So that's all we know, <laughs> right? But I've always, um, I've always been very uh, driven as a person, right? Which you have to be when you're from a huge family and a low income family, right? You have to have that drive. And I did. And my thing was music. I always loved to sing. The trouble was, you know, I'm, when you're born poor, you don't get the opportunity to hear classical music opera, right? Like how, I don't know if you're listening to this, but if you, if you heard music and opera music as a child, you were privileged. Okay. Did not have that growing up. And I'm sure a lot of you have that same experience. Well, that was me, you know, I did not have that, but for some reason I found it. I found opera and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was the greatest music ever made, which is very strange, but I loved it. And so my parents were like, turn off that crap, right? Which was opera, (laughs) but they didn't get it. And I loved it. And so I ended up wanting to pursue opera. And so I went to school, majored in opera, you know, got a degree, it was fantastic. Um, Everything was going well. I was actually singing in castles and cathedrals in Europe, all myself you know, did it all myself, was living my dream life, right? Living in Europe and singing and everything is going great until the government came and didn't renew my visa. So literally I had to come back to America with like 500 bucks in my bank account and just one suitcase. And it sucked. It sucked from going to like the highest of the high thinking, like I've made it in life. This is it, right? And that's one thing that if you're listening, I want you to to think about is it's never whenever you think you've made it or you're going to get to this pinnacle in life where you're like, oh, I'm set, be careful because it's at that moment when things slip because you take it easy, you take it for granted and then it slips right underneath your feet if you don't have a second game plan in place. So it's really important to realize that, right? Anyway, I didn't, I thought I was living high, obviously didn't save any money because I came back to America broke. Not, I mean, but the starving artist thing is also true, right? So you, you do starve as an artist. So I came back to America and thought, I can't even get a normal job right? I'm not even qualified to work the cash register at McDonald's. (laughs) You know, all I've known is singing my whole life. And it's not like they're opera singing jobs growing on trees, right? It's not like it's a high in demand thing. People are begging on the door for opera singers. So I thought, what other skills do I have? You know, I'm not, I have no skills in life, right? So I thought, well, I'm, I'm good at marketing, I guess. Like I I could learn how to do marketing because I've been marketing and PR my whole life, right? You, you don't become a singer and, and sing in Europe if you don't know how to establish relationships with editors and journalists, right? Or know how to market yourself so people buy your music. So it was something I was intuitively good at because I had to be. And if maybe you're listening to this podcast, you think, oh, yeah, I'm not good at anything, but that's not true. You're just not thinking about the skills that you already have that you're not monetizing. Everybody has skills that they have learned in life you're, you just haven't learned how to monetize them yet. Maybe you're really good at organizing, be an operations manager. Maybe you're really good at overseeing projects, project manager. You know, maybe you've always been really good at marketing like someone else's project, your friends being a hype man for your friend. Cool, that's marketing, man. And you can make thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that, being a hype man, right? So I realized I'm gonna use the skill I had marketing to turn it into a business. So I started real estate marketing didn't know anything about it, guys. Like literally I bought a thousand dollar course online. You know, those courses, right? (laughs) Bought the course, um, learned about digital marketing, uh, real estate marketing, and went from zero knowing nothing to six figures in my first nine months. And you may be thinking like, yeah, wow. You know, a lot of people probably come on this show and are saying the same things. And you know, how did you do it? Hard freaking work guys and focusing. That's just the simple secret to it. It's just like, you know, what's the secret to diet, uh, to losing weight, diet and exercise. Like everybody, it's not like Kato or this, or this magic pill. It's, it's very, very simple. You focus and you do the work. So I did that for nine months. Everything was going great. Again, I thought I was on the pinnacle of success, right? My business was doing, you know, 20 K a month. And wow, wasn't that amazing? And I'm so cool. Of course we, we think this about ourselves, 
And then of course COVID hit and boom, real estate is not an essential business. Real estate is not allowed. All my clients went on pause or left me. Of course, they're not gonna put money in marketing. So I thought I got to pivot again. So that's when I thought, well, what do I really want to do? But before that, I decided if I'm not making any, if the paid ads aren't working, I'm going to go back to doing what I always done, which is PR, right? Which is establishing relationship with editors and journalists. Cause at, at that time I didn't have any money for paid ads either. So I thought, well, I'm just going to do what I did before in music, reach out to editors, you know, reach out to publications and get publicity that way for my company. Within two months, I was a contributor to the number one real estate publication in the world, which is Inman News. They asked me to be a brand ambassador and I spoke on their stage to over 1,000 realtors, virtually. <laughs> and I also was doing all of these big publications and these marketers came to me and said, Victoria, what are you doing? Do that for me too. And I realized this is what I really wanna be doing. This is my passion. This is what I've always been very good at. And so I started Victoria's PR, my PR company. And we're going to get into this a little later because I want to provide value to your listeners about how important personal brand is. So if you're listening to this, please stay tuned because this isn't just me talking about myself. I want to provide real value to you. But I was able to go from zero in Victoria's PR to six figures in only three months. And that is because with zero paid ads, because of the power of my personal brand, because of the power of the brand that I had built when I was doing real estate marketing because of the value I had put into the different marketing groups that I'm in, these marketers gave me their money knowing Victoria was gonna take care of them because that was my track record. So we're, we'll talk about this uh, today, but that's my story, how I got to be where I'm at now. We just had 120K a month last month in December. You know, So that's, that's where I'm at. And I have to tell you, it's because of the power of branding, because of the power of personal brand. That's what I'm very passionate about. And so if you have any questions about that, I want to help and provide value because that's how I got to be where I am now. Yeah. And I think it's important to uh, be able to pivot. So obviously pivot yeah. from one career to another and pivot based on circumstances you can't control. You can't control a visa you know, ending and not being renewed. You can't control a pandemic. I initially was going to go into criminal justice and then because of the 2008 recession had a pivot. So things that are behind, beyond your control, like you said, I think it's important to sit down and jot down what you're actually good at and that you should be a starting point, which what you should monetize with. So I think it's important that way and then kind of run with it. And I think relationships are kind of the core of any, any scaling or growth, especially in marketing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would be nowhere without the relationships. And how did I get them? By providing value to the marketplace, you know, by giving free resources, by just reaching out to other marketers, commenting on their status, you know, telling them that's great, not just sitting there and asking for handouts. And that's really important is if you want people to help you be a helpful person because you'll get back what you give, right? So if you're thinking right now in your agency, like, man, I, I haven't even reached 10K yet or whatever it is, and you're, you're thinking that, well, why don't you start by providing value? Because you do know more than someone else. Even if it's just one step more than someone else, that's still one step that you could teach them. If people see you constantly providing value, one, you look like an authority. So that's on, already you're getting market share. But number two, now people wanna be around you because people always wanna be around other people who are providing value. Now you can ask them for things because they don't see you as someone who's looking for a handout. They see you as a player who's actually providing value and they want to help you as well. Yeah, I agree. I think adding value freely and not expecting anything in return. I think that's when like things actually come to you and then creating something and having leverage with that. So like myself with a podcast, you know, interviewing at this point, like 250 people, a lot of those, if I, you know, pitch them to have a conversation or pick their brain, they may have said, you know, I don't have time or this or that, but you know, I'm getting people on that I can ask questions that I'm interested in that the audience is interested in that I get value out of. And it's kind of a direct, I use it as networking as well. I mean, there's been business opportunities, partnerships and stuff like that created other podcasters, other media outlets that I've been able to go on. Last year, I went on about 70 podcasts and wow. you know media outlets. My goal was 40, so I almost doubled it. Wow. So brand building and kind of sharing your story is definitely important. And I think a lot of companies and individuals kind of just share that business side of them. I think it's important to show who you truly are, like what your differentiators are and who you are as a human being outside of the office, outside of your job. 
So me personally, I'm a foster parent. So I advocate and go on a lot of shows in terms of foster care reform, things that I've been through. And that connects with people and on a personal level. So if you touch people on that personal side, regardless of what you have in your backstory, you're more likely to attract the right clients or the right partners because they're coming from like a, a similar either background or similar core values that they want to align themselves with. Absolutely. I love that you spoke on that because a lot of times we're, we think we need to like on our socials, post our results, 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 and like, look how amazing I am. And people like that's, that's just white noise at this point. And people want to, that's nothing that connects you to your audience, right? Like you said, people want to hear your personal story. Like the fact that you're a foster parent, that makes you so much more relatable. Like you're a father, you know, like that's, that's so relatable. People want to see that. So if you have a dog or if you have a weird interest, you like Pokemon cards, whatever it is that you do, don't be afraid to share that as well. You know, and, and that's, that's how business is done. People to people, not business to business. Yeah, I agree. And if you're in an industry and you're putting out just factual things or things of that nature, everybody is, you know, putting the same information out. So what, you know, stands you apart and how are you going to reach someone in the track? I, I think when you're growing, sometimes you don't have the luxury of picking and choosing clients. Sometimes clients don't align from core values to, you know, what you're trying to do, but you have to, you know, pay staff, keep the lights on. But eventually when you reach a level where you have the, you know, opportunity and kind of the luxury of aligning yourself with the right clients, I think that differentiation and showing that difference really, you know, helps you attract the right clients. I completely agree. And I also think that, you know, a lot of marketers, entrepreneurs, they, they just think paid ads, paid ads, paid ads, like put all your money into paid ads. Right. And that's just the way it goes. Paid ads will never open up doors for you because guess what? You put $10,000 in paid ads at the end of that month, you're at zero, right? Nothing. You have nothing to show for it. If you invest money in yourself, in your personal brand, in your marketing, in your PR, that will live with you forever. Those relationships that you make will last forever and it will open doors that would never have opened for you if you had just stuck to paying ads and doing the traditional route for marketing. It's all about relationships, guys. And what I'm talking about is being on these podcasts, having articles written about you, you know, getting your personal message out there, talking to people who are influencers in your space. That's how doors get open. That's how you become a true industry leader and an authority in your market. Yeah, I agree. And I think like paid, paid, you know, efforts, I obviously uh, do digital marketing. So paid is part of kind of your digital it's marketing staff it, yeah. that yeah. has a purpose that when you do have a budget it helps you. But like you said, when the, the budget goes away, that message is gone from the internet. So yeah. I, I encourage people one to have a sound area to drive that traffic to regardless of how you're driving it, that really shows who you are, you know, a personal brand site, uh, you know, a company site, whatever that is that conveys that value of who you are and what you do. And then also, like you said, organically build, you know, areas of uh, content on your website that you can have organic traffic coming through over time. And obviously if it performs well, and then opportunities like this and other PR opportunities are not only from that visibility standpoint, but for me as a digital marketer, it's a great source of ongoing referral traffic. So yeah. if that article about you is an in ink, whatever, wherever it is, that has the ability if it somehow links back to you to drive traffic over time and keep driving people that are interested in you and your business. And with uh, podcasts, like the setup is awesome. Like I, I think the audio medium is superior because it's the only thing you can really multitask with. And it technically with the RSS feed syndicates to have however amount of sites you're on. So you're getting that syndication, you're getting additional links. And I think it goes a long way. And with COVID, I think a lot of people with traditional marketing, speaking on stages, moved over to share their message on podcasts and other things that they can do in the audio space. I absolutely agree. Podcasts are such a huge, and I think we're going to see in 2021, them really blowing up more than they were before of really big media companies taking podcasts seriously and seeing how important they are to the overall brand strategy. If you're not on podcast guys, start, start pitching out, start thinking about starting your own. I, Roman, I agree with you 100% on that. That's definitely a part of our strategy for our clients is getting them on podcasts because you have to think about it. Everybody consumes media differently. 
Some people love listening to podcasts. Some people want to read articles. Some people want to know thought leadership advice pieces about what they should be doing in their business. Some people want to know you, the person behind the business. Who started this business? Why should I care? They should be able to find all of that on you from a simple Google search. Because here's the thing, guys. How many of you, if you're going to buy like a toaster, $20 toaster, you're on Google, which is the best toaster, which one toasts the best, um, you know, which one has the best reviews on Amazon, and it's $20, right? I know you're doing that because I do that too. Now imagine you have a thousands of dollar program. Do you not think that your clients are going on Google and researching you before they give you thousands of dollars? You better believe they are. So if you're not showing up or worse, if your competitor is showing up for those keywords, guess who's gonna get the deal? your competitor, the person who's taken the time to really establish themselves as that credibility, as that authority in the niche. Yeah, I agree. I, I didn't really think I was going to uh, be in the podcast space. I think if I started podcasting, I would have started like five years earlier than I did. And I think I started my podcast first, and then I saw the value of going on other shows and doing a lot of opportunities and stuff. And then and vice versa, you know, grew guest audiences from them coming on my show and then kind of cross pollinated with being on other shows, attracting people from other similar listenership, you know, basis to my show. So I think that's really helped. And then incorporating that within digital marketing strategy and then ending up doing media buys and working with like top five podcast networks like PRX for like shows like TED Talks and stuff like that. So like getting that experience, I would have not necessarily thought I would be doing so, you know, three, four years ago. But I think with digital marketing, anything online in terms of visibility, like you have to adapt and figure out where people are seeking attention and where your target is, you know, target audience is spending majority of their time and then adapting to it and figuring out how to reach them with the right message. So. I agree with that 100%. And what I love what you did, Roman, is that you found out maybe this wasn't my original plan, right? Maybe I thought digital marketing, and I didn't think, like you said, I didn't think podcast was going to be it, but then here I am, you know, with this amazing, you know, top podcast that's opened up all of these doors. You know, if you're listening to this, that's why he's so successful. Roman, that's why you, you're so successful is because you were able to pivot so quickly. You saw the need in the marketplace and you jumped. And I think a lot of people are afraid. They think, well, you know, what I've read in this course or this book says that I need to do Facebook ads and then I need to do this and this, and they don't jump until the whole market, right? So unless podcast is super, super popular, they're not going to jump into the podcast train. But guys, the first adapters, the early adapters, they are the ones reaping all of the awards. Is it risky? For sure it is. But that's your job as a marketer is to take risks, is to try new things. That's our job as entrepreneurs. And the ones who can adapt quickly and see the trend and jump on the trends, they're the ones who are going to reap all the rewards. Yeah, and I think uh, a platform or an effort that may not be focused on your target audience, you should at least test it. So like mm -hmm. when uh, TikTok bought Musical.ly and you know it became TikTok or the company that bought it became, you know, renamed to TikTok, I thought it was still like lip syncing, like a young demo, like 13 year olds dancing. And then I made an account and on TikTok, primarily almost all my content is my experiences as a foster parent, you know, what I'm dealing with different cases, uh, things that would change. And then obviously a lot of like pushing information and different video clips and stuff like that from the show. But, you know, one of my first videos I put out, I got like 120,000 views and like wow. 6,000 likes and like, you know, 700 comments that I went through and actually answered all of them. Wow. And I saw the value of that. And actually that post opened up, I got reached out a magazine from New York, you know, they said, you know, I saw your post about how you're dealing with COVID with four young kids and being under lockdown. We're doing a story about that. Can we just, you know, call you 10, 15 minutes to get your interview and then write it up. So wow. if I didn't try that, obviously, and didn't put that piece of content out, I wouldn't have gotten that additional opportunity that I didn't have to pay anything for it. Just putting out content that is your personal experience, regardless if it's like something you're going through or relatable to your business, but it opened up a door to something else and then added value to other people that have been experiencing similar things, you know, in similar situations. Yeah. And that goes back to the point we originally made is bringing that human humaneness into our business is not being afraid to talk about who we are as persons, as human beings, 
and that you bring up a beautiful point. That's, that's how it's done is having these personal relationships is not being afraid to share personal things about you. That is how people are going to relate to you and you make it better in this world is by being vulnerable and being able to share personal experiences. Yeah, I agree. So what motivates you to succeed? Obviously, those motivations may have changed over time, but what currently motivates you to succeed? You know, uh, for the longest time, my whole goal in life was to be an opera singer and just like make it big. And then when you realize your goal and then have it taken away from you, it like does something to your psyche, right? Like, what can I do this? You sort of doubt yourself and you sort of question yourself. And I, I was always told like, oh, you don't have a head for business, you know? like by different partners that I was with is, uh, oh, oh, you're a woman and, and maybe you don't have a head for business, right? And I believed that for a long time. And I thought, well, no, I just sing and that's just what I do. And, you know, and it wasn't until uh, everything came crashing down. So it was this survival instinct. And maybe a lot of you listening to this, you feel the pandemic, like you feel like, wow, my whole world is turned upside down. Maybe you feel like your identity is lost. Like maybe you thought you were this kind of person and now you don't know who you are. Well, this is the best time to pivot and find out because it's not about finding who you are. It's about creating who you want to be and who you will be. I believe in the power of will, not want. Everybody always asks themselves, what do I want? That's not the right question to be asking. It's about what do you will yourself to do? Because at the end of the day, without action, what you want is nothing more than a wish. So coming back to my story, I didn't ask myself what I wanted anymore because I wanted was singing and that singing dream was gone. That ship had sailed, right? So I started to ask myself, what do I will myself to do? And I thought, I wanna make a lot of money. I've been told my whole life that I am not good at business. I don't know how to work for somebody else because I've worked for myself my whole life. So I don't want that path of working a nine to five. I don't even know how, and I don't wanna learn, <laughs> you know? I'm the boss here but how do I become the boss, you know? And so I told myself, if I could just make 10K a month, like if I could just prove to myself, I had that benchmark that I could do it. And it was hard when you first start guys, maybe you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, I don't know anything about, it. I keep failing. That first 10K is really hard, you know? But I just kept saying, I can do this. I know I can do this. If I, if I did it in opera, I can do it in this. And even though it's a completely different niche, I, I just have to prove this to myself. It was a matter of personal principle. I had a strong why. And once I hit that 10 K, it was like the barriers in my mind went away. And I knew that nothing was going to stop me. I knew that I had overcome this mental barrier and hurdle in my mind and that I was limitless. I could do whatever it was that I wanted. Now, is it hard? Yes, but I will myself to do it by taking massive action every single day because my why is so strong and my why is that I can do this. I can set a good example for women. I can set a good example for my family and I can set a good example for myself that I can do this and I can be this person who provides real value to the world and makes a difference. Yeah, I agree. And I think that first barrier is yourself. So it's a you versus you battle. Once you get past that first hurdle, it gets a little bit easier to like start something, actually start it, get it out of your mind, write it down, take action. And then it's what you surround yourself with. If people tell you you can't do something or you should be doing something else or it's dumb or this or that, I mean, that's what you're going to believe. I mean, you're going to, you, you're going to let yourself believe that obviously you have to take a stand at some point if you want to get out of that and out of that mindset, or it's going to kind of hold you back that whole time. And, you know, even if you attempt something, I don't think anything is truly a failure unless you learn, you know, you learn something from it and you can apply it moving forward, then it's not a failure. So, you know, even if you tried something, worst case, it was a learning experience and you can pivot into something else. But if you never tried anything, that's the things you regret, you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the line. What if I started this company? What if I called that person and reached out and made that connection? And then you'll never know if you try it, you know, worst case, it didn't work. You know, what did you learn from it? Apply it to something moving forward and, you know, take it and learn from it. Absolutely. And I would have to just add to that is, you know, a lot of times we talk about this is who I am. And there's this whole like dichotomy about finding who you really are. I so don't agree with that at all. I don't believe in a fixed personality. I don't believe that we are this person and people say, well, that's just how I am. No, that's how you choose to be every single day. Every single day, you have the choice to be somebody different. When you wake up in the morning, 
you wake up and you inhabit all the old habits, which you think are you, but they're habits and they're not you. They're things that you choose to do. And maybe at this point in your life, you even forgotten that they're actual choices. Maybe you have these habits so engrossed. You're like, well, that's just what I do. You know, I just wake up every morning and I, and I have a cigarette. That's just who I am. It's what I do. No, that's a habit that you've kept doing over and over and over. But at any day, once you realize that these are habits and your personality is not fixed, it's something that you choose to do every single day, you can have control. Just that first thing of realizing, oh, that's actually not me. I choose to be that way. Now, sure, if you want that cigarette habit, I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life, but realize it's a choice and it's not who you are. It's a choice. If you're someone who's, well, I just really can't focus on one task. No, that's not true. That's who you say you are. You choose to be that way. You could focus for five minutes. And if you just do five minute stints every day, then you could have a business. It's just figuring out where you are and realizing that this story you're telling yourself is a limiting story. You are greater than you are and own your greatness. Yeah, I agree. So what's one thing you may have seen as a weakness in yourself in the past that you've turned around and utilized as a strength today? Yeah, I think it was self-doubt you know, like as everyone has, especially I, and maybe now during the pandemic where we just sitting home alone and thinking, Oh God, I, I I don't like that. I do this. And I don't think I can do this. And the world is going crazy. I had a lot of self-doubt as well. You know, I started in a brand new business. I knew nothing about. And maybe if you're listening to this, you're want to pivot as well. And you're thinking, who am I? There's that imposter syndrome, right? Of like, who am I to try digital marketing? Who am I to think that I can charge a thousand, two thousand $2,000 per client? Who am I to, to do that? We all have that but just realizing that that's just mind garbage. That means nothing. Think to yourself, okay, who am I to do this? Am I gonna work hard to do it? Yes, I am. Am I gonna do whatever it takes to figure out how to serve this client? Yes, I am. Do I have people that I can go to in case I have questions? Like, am I in a Facebook group or do I know somebody or is there a course that I have that I can reference if I have any questions about this client? Yes, I do. Okay, then what's the issue here? You have everything you need. It's just mind garbage. So just getting out of your own way, understanding that you are your own worst enemy and you get to decide something different every single day is very powerful. That's how I overcame it of just surrounding myself with the right people, right? So get in Facebook groups, you know, get in the right groups or you're around positive people who are doing big, important things in their life, right? That inspire you to be big and great in yourself. It doesn't mean you have to like move cities or anything like that. Like just join different social media groups. You know, because what we don't realize is that we're in echo chambers on social media where Facebook and and TikTok and all of these social media platforms, they just keep on feeding us what they think we want to see. We can change the algorithm. Start with that. Maybe you can't leave your, your house and your house sucks right now. That's okay. You can change your mental life. You can change what you see on your phone. You can trick the algorithm to only seeing positive posts from other entrepreneurs that really inspire you. You can join those groups and then network with them. And then all you're talking about is business and making yourself better, making your personal life better. That's how you overcome the self-doubt by surrounding yourself with positive people, having a strong why, staying focused and taking action every single day. Yeah, it's getting out of your own head, getting all that negative stuff out. I mean, you know, you see in the news, you see different things all around you. It's oftentimes negative. So figuring out what that place is. And I say, if you can wake up, and have like, you wake up tomorrow, you can still make a change in terms of the trajectory of your life that doesn't define who you are. And as a foster parent, you know, we've helped actually a lot of biological parents and guardians to kind of bridge the gap and be a resource for them to get over, you know, drug abuse, different situations they've been in to help them get their children back and then be a resource after the children are reunified. So, you know, seeing things and people in different situations, it doesn't define you. Um, you know, and people talking from an outside perspective, I mean, that's easier to do. You know, this person was, you know, addicted to so-and-so, how can they be on drugs? Well, you don't know what that situation was. You can't necessarily, you know, judge somebody in a different situation with different variables in their life or other things going on, what they've experienced in terms of mental health or anything like that. So I think it's important in terms of that direction, if you can change something. And I think being a resource and helping others, you know, me personally, I, I like I consider myself a heart led entrepreneur. So I try to, you know, leave a nice. legacy, give as much back information or anything otherwise. And, you know, the rest kind of takes care of itself. When I switch to that kind of mindset, more op- opportunities open up than before, before I started my company and I was more on a corporate 
uh, agency side when it was just kind of chasing titles and, you know, a higher salary or a bigger bonus. When I started helping people more and not expecting anything to in return, more things started, you know, happening in terms of doors being open. I completely agree. You know, it's, but I want to come back to what you said that's really powerful is that you get to decide, you know, how you want to be. And speaking of, as you said as well, like mental illness and things like that, a lot of people are going through depression, anxiety. If you're listening to this and think, feeling overwhelmed, I'm here to tell you, like, I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. We all go through bad days. We all get anxiety. We all get depression. Like, welcome to 2021. You know, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. And I think the most important thing is just deciding how you're going to choose to feel and realize that that feeling doesn't own you. You know, at the end of the day, you have that free will to decide. There are many days, especially when I was first starting my agency where I had 15 minutes between meetings, right? Between sales calls, I would go on my bed and I would cry because it was so overwhelming. And then I'd wipe my eyes and then boom, I'm on the next sales call. How's it going? Cause I just needed to get it out. And that's okay. Like don't punish or judge yourself. If you have those feelings, like that's human. And like we talked about before, it's people want to connect with other human beings. It's all right. There are times when I'm just so overwhelmed and I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do all of this? And I feel so like, you know, I'm all by myself and how am I going to do all of this? You know, one technique that I always do is I like force myself to smile and I hate it. And I'm like, I'm not even happy. I hate this smile. But if you smile, it, it releases serotonin to your brain and you can't help but like feel better. And it's stupid and you're going to get mad. Like certain times I'm like, oh, I'm so angry. I just want to be sad, but I'm smiling. And it sort of really helps of like, oh, I can't be mad when I'm smiling. Like, okay. And then, and then you're, once you have that serotonin in your brain, you start to think better thoughts because that's the thing is those negative thoughts, depression, anxiety. It's just one thought goes down that rabbit hole of like, oh man, I can't, I can't do this. And I also can't do that. And I also can't do that, right? You're feeding your brain and it goes into that loop. But if you start smiling, then a good idea is going to pop into your brain and then feed that good idea and keep feeding those good ideas. And I know these are temporary fixes to a, an actual real problem, but I just want to tell you guys like there, it's hard. It is really hard, but it could be hard working for someone else nine to five, or it could be hard working for yourself. They're both going to be hard but at least with one, you know, you get more control over your own future. Yeah, I agree. So what's one piece of advice you can leave with the audience, personal or professional? I guess, I guess I'll do both. And uh, in one, I guess the theme of this talk would just to be connect to your humanity. You're going to find that that's going to work better professional as well as personal and realize that you're a human being. And if you're having a bad day, you know, you can post about it or, you know what, I was going to do this and this messed up, right? Or I spelt this thing wrong on my funnel and making fun of yourself is having that personal connection with people. And you may be tempted to think like, oh, I'm a business owner. I need to hurry up and do paid ads and I do need all these back end things. What I'd like you to focus on, and if you're going to take away one thing is building relationships because they don't take much time and they're a lot funner to do than building funnels, for example, right? And they're also going to take you a lot further in your business than you realize. And not, and I don't mean relationships like you're going to reach out to five people and say, hey, what can you do for me? I need help. No, I mean actually providing real value and taking the time to actually getting to know this person and giving value in return. Yeah, I agree. I, I personally value uh, soft skills over hard skills because I think if somebody is passionate enough, I can teach them anything if they have the will to learn. But it's harder to teach things like emotional empathy or emotional IQ or leadership skills. And I think going through the experiences I have, I obviously experience and, and, and different things of that nature is the only thing that's going to lead you to that and grow that. Because if you haven't went through those scenarios, you're not going to be kind of like battle tested in that sense. And then I also say, you know, I, I'll take wisdom over knowledge because wisdom is that experience and knowledge is that learned right on the spot. I completely agree. I completely agree. So please, you know, use those, those relationships, you know, that's my, my whole business model, Victoria's PR is all about relationships. Like that's, that's why I love my business so much. It's like, oh, I, I have relationships with editors and, uh, you know, journalists and all those sorts of things, but it's wonderful because I just really get to say, like, I get to read their articles and say, oh my gosh, I, I just read this article that you wrote. That's amazing. You know, and that's business, I guess, if you want to call it because I'm, you know, getting the relationship at the same time, like, I know I actually love this journalist work and I'm actually super excited or podcasters. Like I love listening to podcasts. So it's really exciting for me to get to do 
what I do, you know, but it's not just PR guys. It's for marketing. It's for anything as well. Establish those relationships. Yeah, I agree. So I really appreciate you stopping by today. Can you let the audience know how they can find you? Absolutely. So I have a website, victoriouspr.com, obviously off Victoria. So play on words, but also what I'd like to say, and also in regard to what this podcast is about today is, you know, I'm a human person. I want to connect with other human beings. So if you found value out of this podcast, if you like what I had to say, if you want to, you know, say hi, please shoot me a message on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook, Victoria Kennedy, and just say, you know, listen to you on Roman's podcast. I had some value or had this takeaway. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help. But yeah, I'm a human being and I want to connect and help you as much as I personally can. Awesome. Thanks again for stopping by. Thank you for having me.